This week, the mama bus went to Tombstone. Thank you. Dodge the bullets. <laughs> <laughs> The Crystal Palace is an old 1800 saloon that we got to go hang out in. The guy here is the bartender, AJ. Then we got to go see the Good Enough Mine. We're doing just with these basic hand tools here. Now, these guys had no power equipment or machinery at all underground. Now they had a couple of different methods for boring their blasting holes. If you had one man working alone, that was called single jacking. They used a four pound hammer and a drill steel. As they bored deeper into the ore, they would use longer steels up to about three feet long. Uh, this is actually what they drilled with back in the late 1800s. Now if you had two men working together, that was double jacking. One guy would be holding and twisting that drill steel, while another man, hopefully a darn good shot, was swinging a eight pound sledge here. Because up until uh, 1890, these guys had nothing but candles underground. They were doing this work almost in the dark. Now, if a miner was drilling down into a surface like this one, in order to keep the sediment flushed out of the holes as they drilled, and have to have you move back a little bit, get all wet, they would take their old 1880s Gatorade bottle, like this one here, <laughs> and this is what these guys did 10 hours a day, six days a week. Now, during a 10 hour shift, they could drill a series of six or eight holes, kind of a triangular shaped pattern. They put their dynamite, tap some fuses in there, and it blow the ore apart. Boy, Auntie Kim, nice of you to get on the program with the red in your shirt today. That uh, was accidental, apparently. Now, there's 25 large mines like this one in the Tombstone Mining District. That's about a four and a half square mile area. They have a combined total of 350 miles of underground workings. Wow. Anywhere under the town, down in the wash here and on these hills you're looking at, anywhere you're likely to walk there, you'd be right over top of one. Don't eat it, it's not real popcorn. You folks farther back, you won't see this till you pass right in front of it. But this drift right here, that goes back to behind the ticket booth where you checked in. At the end of that drift was what was called the million dollar stove. That was a room 300 foot long, 200 foot wide, and 100 foot tall. Uh, what the miners didn't realize when they blasted the ore out of that stove, they had come to within one or two foot of the surface of Tufnut Street out here. <laughs> Not a good thing. Now, this mine went out of production in 1890. In uh, April of 1907, a man with an ice wagon with his horse pulling it was coming down Tufnut Street. Top of that stove collapsed and down they fell about 90 foot into the mine here. The amazing thing is it didn't kill them. They actually had to bring the horse back out through the vine. It would have had to have been the same drift here. And they dragged him right up the incline shaft where the stairs are now. This was a big improvement. Uh, now when a mine like this one bored right through limestone, an open flame like that was perfectly safe in here. There's no explosive dust or gas in this kind of a rock. 
Uh, if you was in an old coal mine especially, you got to be real careful with open flame. Uh, coal dusting is explosive, methane gas. Uh, what those miners would do is bring canaries underground. If that canary put sand or just dropped dead in his little cage, you knew you had a lack of oxygen, poison gas, something like that going on. Time to get the heck out of there. These are the tombstone vigilantes. They are kind of weird. One face down, one face up, one on each side. There you are. Uh, Carl, those coffins you were making, did you just suck them off like I told you? They're about that big around. You got all of them in the house? All right. No! We got them all! Get in there. Let somebody else take the picture. We were lucky enough to get to go for a free stagecoach ride. I don't think anybody said November 25th, 1881, Virgil, while he was town marshal, Virgil stepped out of the Oriental out onto the boardwalk when he was ambushed and shot twice by an outlaw. I'd kill Virgil. He did lose you to his left arm. Now, Tombstone was founded by a man named Ed Shefflin. Ed Shefflin was a prospector and a cavalry scout out of Fort.